Hello, everybody, and welcome to What's Next, our podcast and blog series about startups and innovation. My name is Giovanni Vacari. I am head of product here at Startup Bootcamp, and today we will be interviewing our luminous Tradler, represented here by their founder and CEO, Jasper de Pres. Uh, Tradler is a SaaS for improving employee engagement, experience, and provide leaders and managers with valuable insights. It helps you recognize daily contributions and have happier employees. Jasper, welcome and thank you so much for joining us and taking the time. Well, thank you for, for having me. Super cool. I'm going to start with the first question that we always ask everybody. Can you ask a bit about your entrepreneurial journey and how Tradler came to be? Um, yeah, so actually it started about three, no, four years ago already. Well, four years ago already. Uh, and it all started with a mailman. Uh, and that mailman is my dad. So my dad, he was a mailman for about 40 years. Uh, and the moment that he went into retirement, I mean, he's Belgian, eh? so you will you'll probably recognize the sarcasm there. Uh, but the moment that he went on, on, um, on retirement, I asked him, what do I need to look forward to? And sure, we have different careers, right? Um, but his answer was, well, absolutely nothing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you, thank you, dad. That's very motivational, virtual high five here. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was interesting to see that for people like my dad, right, who are doing a job like a mailman, and there's so many different roles out there, we kind of take that for granted. And we kind of like forget that we need to go and celebrate those people as well for doing, yes, they do the same job every day, but the fact that they do it every day to that quality and every day consistently, that's amazing, right? And so that's that's the gap that we saw in the market. And so that's where we where we, yeah, that's our mission around it, right? So that's that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to celebrate those people. Nice, yeah. I, I love that during the pandemic, we were calling them essential workers, right? Frontline workers. And indeed, we really saw that, that we really need to value them more and create services that uh, help them do not only a better job, but also be more appreciated. Super cool. And you joined Story Bootcamp in 2018. I remember it was a lot of fun. I remember you guys having a great time. But let me uh, ask you then, how was your experience during the Story Bootcamp program? Yeah, Giovanni, we're going to keep it a little professional, right? So we're going to talk about the startup, <laughs> the startup part itself, <laughs> to go on all the other parts. Um, no, it was amazing, right? So to be honest, back in those days when we started in Startup Bootcamp, we had a completely different company. We were actually in the travel industry back in those days, uh, which now looking back with the global pandemic, sweet Lord, are we, are we lucky that we're not in there. <laughs> um, but so we were, we were in the travel industry. Uh, and I mean, after like selling two activities online to both the mothers of the founders, we kind of realized, hmm, this might not be the most scalable uh, business because my mother goes up one or two times a year on holiday. So that would not really work. Um, so... Uh, we, we started to start a bootcamp really almost with a clean sheet. Like, okay, we need to make a pivot because this is not going to work. And that's quite where we actually got in touch with Scent, which was one of the, the sponsors, right? The corporate sponsors of Startup Bootcamp, who funnily enough is a male organization. Um, so that's where everything fell together, the story of my dad then came back. And then the problem that my dad was seeing, they also saw on a corporate level. And so that's really how we started. Um, so for us, I mean, really, it was like a, it was like our first part was a bit of a false start, but we needed that experience of like going in the wrong direction for a while just to learn. Um, but I would I would almost I mean, when people ask, when are you founded? Really, I'm talking about more or less that pivot. That's really when we started. Right. So, yeah, for so, us, it was really good. <laughs> so we helped you find this product market fit and lend this POC. And then how was it? So in three months, you, you guys changed completely and, and, and got a POC with Sand. Like, how, how was that experience? Yeah, so that was kind of wild, uh, to be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I remember sitting with Oli. So Oli is the, the other uh, co-founder. Uh, and I remember sitting with him in Amsterdam. You have the, you have the little lunch part there downstairs right in the building. And I'm like, yeah. okay, Oli, uh, I want you to delete all the code, all the backups of the previous platform, everything that it's like, that we cannot even touch it anymore. And he's looking at me like I'm absolutely mental, which he might have a point, but, um, and so, <laughs> so he deletes that. Um, and then we're like, okay, so now we literally have zero left. So <laughs> what do we do now? Uh, and so we, we then, I mean, in, in Startup Bootcamp, the people that were there from Scent as well were amazing. That were Martin, uh, Martin and 
Yeah, Martin. I know it's not a joke, right? This is like the three <laughs> most typical Dutch names that are there. Uh, but they were amazing, right? Because together with them, we kind of iterated over mockups, but we didn't have any platform. It just like this is clear yeah. for everyone. We didn't have platform. And so with those mockups, like I think we did around 80 iterations of how we could potentially solve the problem. We even went to work as a mailman in Sent for like a week. Um, but then with those mock-ups, they organized a meeting with their CEO, their CFO, their HR director, uh, and they signed off on a pilot uh, on a mock-up, prepaid. Uh, wow. So that was, that was kind of wild. And I remember that, I, I mean, yeah, this was a mistake on my part, but I told them that we're going to be able to go live in three months. No idea <laughs> about like corporate security. Like, <laughs> I didn't really think about that. Compliance. Uh, compliance. Like, yeah, yeah, that's all going to be fine. Uh, but actually we did, right? So uh, a big shout out here to Ori because together with the, the team, he built like, I mean, enterprise ready platform in about three months. Um, so yeah, that was a, yeah, that was our experience with our, uh, our pilot. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's, that really, the answers were not in the building uh, somehow. Uh, that's really cool, man. Super cool. Super cool story. I think, uh, we go a little bit now from a bit outside your experience with Starter Bootcamp, a little bit, a little bit into the recent developments as COVID showed, you know, employee engagement could be a turning point of life and death, especially during the crisis with the new normal, as they like to call it. Could you tell us a bit more about how Traveler connects people to their organizations and goals even during these times? Yeah, so um, it, it's funny that during COVID, suddenly everyone goes in like overdrive and how to communicate with everyone. Uh, and so we have, besides COVID, we also have the Zoom pandemic uh, at the same time where everyone is like stuck in video calls every five seconds. Um, okay, so first, I mean, disclaimer, I, I'm not going to say that I know all the answers to this, right? By no means. Um, but what we've seen so far is that there's obviously an element of trust, right? Do I trust my people to simply do the work without me being there present? And the answer is, I mean, in 90% in of the cases, yes, <laughs> because that's why you hire the people in the first place, because they're amazing. Um, but the second part is more about direction. So if you go from the baseline that people by nature want to do the right thing, um, then the question is, well, but do they know what is the right thing at that specific moment? Because that is, I mean, that's dynamic, that changes over time. So what Treadler does is Treadler, first of all, it celebrates you doing those actions, but it, well, it gives you a like kind of a, a direction as a, as a team member, like what is now really important? Where do I need to focus? Um, so what we've seen as, as, um, as an effect of that is that, I mean, we actually build a new feature as well around it or a new, new functionality, which is uh, something that we call CAM. We need to change the name to I mean, CAM sound like micromanagement. That's definitely not what we, what we wanted to do. Uh, but CAM starts for computer aided management. Uh, so we've created a platform that's across all of our customers and that's learning how to best connect and drive performance on an individual basis, right? So that's, I mean, does that answer more or less your, your question? No, it definitely does because my next it talks a bit as well to my next question, which is, uh, do you see the, these challenges, for example, not knowing what to do but when to do what, right? Um, the, and, and and praising uh, employees, do you see that these challenges differ depending on the size of organization? So the yes and no. Um, so I yeah, I think that's an interesting question because it, it does differ depending to a certain threshold, right? So, I mean, there's not really a big difference if there's 10,000 or 15,000 people, right? That, that will be more or less the same kind of, of, of issue. Um, but even on the smaller organization, you will see the same symptoms, right? Obviously, they will translate in different ways, right? So you have lower productivity, you have people being more often sick, you have churn. I mean, those kind of elements come back in all different kinds of organizations in different shapes and forms and, and so on. So, but what we do see is rather than by size is that they do differ by industry. So, I mean, we mainly focus on like postal and logistics, but we now also start dipping our feet in banking and, and, uh, and shared service centers. And there you see different, different types of problems, right? Like, I mean, a postal, they are already working without a desk, right? So that distance was already there. 
where now suddenly a bank <laughs> needs to go completely remote <laughs> and they're like, oh, hold on. This is not how we've done it in the past 250 million years, right? So, um, yeah, that, it, it, I think it's more on industry rather than, than size um, that it changes. Thank you, valuable insight. Uh, how do you approach digital transformation then for this larger organization? So we just talked about banks, right? Doing this for a million years the same way. And do you believe that there more than anything transformation comes down to talent? So I, I yeah, I think that's an interesting uh, question. I don't think that talents, yes, but depends on the definition of talent, but I think it comes down to people. Right, so I'm going to give you an actual uh, like anecdote, uh, when my dad was still working as a mailman, I remember him coming home uh, and actually like for three days in a row, like just utterly complaining about the post back in those days, right? Uh, introducing a new app that he could use to scan things, which actually, if you think about it, it's making his life easier right? I mean, yeah. but rather than actually writing things there, he could just scan it. And he's, I mean, his, his reactions are, oh, and there's people in HQ and they don't know, and now I need to do other things. And the digital transformation, I mean, you can have the best tools, you can have the best processes, but in the end of the day, if your people are not following them or if your people are not changing it the way that they used to do it, they're, I mean, they're waste, right? They're literally a waste of time, of budget and so on. So, um yeah, so th that's what we're seeing. And again, that's across um, all, all sizes, all industries. So really the key there is how do, I, how do I connect my people to what I'm doing? How do I make that real time or relevant today? Like, hey, today I want you to focus on this because of X, Y, Z reason. So how do I communicate that effectively to a very large pool of people? Right? And so that's, that's, um, that's where we help. And I think it's also not only about improving performance, but also uh, reducing churn, right? Uh, it is, uh, especially delivery is an industry that has a lot of churn. Um, and I see here on your stats that you helped increase productivity by 15%, which is awesome, but an even better 39% reduced employee rotation. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I think that's super valuable. Yeah, so uh, this is a, I, I, yeah, I like this, this stat, obviously, because it's, <laughs> it's quite amazing, right? Uh, we, we never thought that we were going to hit this. Um, even more in our initial contracts with, with Scent, uh, when we did the pilot, our aim was 5%. So 39 was kind wow. of, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, still, uh, yeah, I still think that we should have priced it different if I would have known that, but that's a different point. Um, so... It's quite funny because when we talk about an employee journey, we really talk most of the time about like contracts and we talk about like all the boring stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That's not, an, I mean, yes, that's a journey, but let's talk a little bit about the emotional journey. So I told you that we, we went to work with, uh, with Send for, uh, as a mailman for a week. Now, it turns out that the worst day to work as a mailman in the Netherlands, this is not rocket science, is when it rains. Uh, ah, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> but it's a rainy country. But so here's the here's the interesting fact that if it rains in the first two weeks that someone started as a mailman in sent, there was 70% more chance that that person was going to quit their job in the first three months. Um, and so what we did in Treadler is we simply connected um, their GPS with the weather forecast. And if I was a mailman in sent, and I delivered mail for the first time that it rained, I would get a message saying, hey, congratulations, it's your first rainy day. If you had five rainy days, you would become the rain master, which obviously I thought was super funny, <laughs> right? But, uh, yeah. but so by doing that, what you basically do is you turn it ne the, all those negative triggers into kind of a positive one. And I mean, obviously with Scent, the, 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 the results were absolutely amazing, right? Um, but yeah, it's, it's really about how do I understand that emotional journey of the person that I'm, that, I mean, that I'm trying to help. Right? And so that's what we try to do with each of our customers. So we go through trial period to understand that context. And then from there, we, we move on. And you're now taking another company on this journey. I think we're very happy. We got first, uh, first hand on the news. Uh, you're taking <laughs> Postanel on the Traveler journey. So congratulations, uh, and tell me a little bit more of what are your goals with Postanel and what are Postanel's goals with Traveler? 
So actually, we already finalized the pilot. Um, so we did uh, we did the pilot in the in the um, from September to December uh, 2020. And the challenge was really about how do we stay connected with our people? Uh, so with the pandemic, obviously, there was really a lot of distance. Uh, and so we went live initially with around 1,000 uh, mailmen all across the Netherlands. Um, so, yeah, the, <laughs> it was interesting, those Zoom calls with all the Dutch accents that, you know, it's very hard to understand at, at, yeah. at times. But, um, but really good, right? So we, we went... Um, we went to preset the platform together with their project team. We spoke to the trade unions as well, right? Proactively to explain them what we're about to do. Uh, and the effect of that out of the pilot is that we, I mean, we celebrated 55,000 times people their work. Um, and the effect is that 64% of those uh, initial pilot group uh, said that they felt more connected to the organization, to their team, and to the colleagues. Um, wow! So that's that's uh, yeah, that's a great result. Uh, and we're now in the process to see how we, how we can move forward with PostNL. Wow! Congratulations. Well, PostNL is for those who don't know the largest postal service in the Netherlands. So that's a huge milestone for you guys. Uh, congratulations! And um, last question before our rapid fire session: um, What personal qualities? a founder should have if they want to create a successful startup, in your opinion? Yeah, so I love that you add at the end, in your opinion, because I think probably <laughs> the, best, the best person to answer this is Patrick Dezeo, who probably seen more founders than I did, but... <laughs> about a thousand. <laughs> about a thousand times more than I did, right? So that's uh, <laughs> this is probably a better person to answer this. But I mean, what I've, what I've seen working for me, right? So that's the only thing I can share. So what for me is, look, I mean... It kind of sounds like one of those tacky quotes that you find on like, uh, you know, on LinkedIn or whatever. Um, but it, it's really about persistence, persistence and resilience, because, um, I mean, we call this the fucking, right? The fucking is like, you know, something is going too well and you know it's going to fail at some point. You don't know how yet, but you know something is going to go wrong, right? And you just assume it already. And, and, and that's really, I mean, that... For us, it, we have been having a lot of ups and downs. I mean, I think as any startup, I know it's not like in the in the movies that you see that it's all like very shiny and, and whatever. No, we do not have a ping pong table. We do not have a water <laughs> slide. No, that's not, it's not the type of organization. We don't drive around all in Teslas. Um, but it's really about how do we how do we solve the problem today? And then you know that tomorrow there's going to be 10 other problems, right? So it's about keep on going, keep on going, keep on progressing. Uh, and that's, that's not easy, right? That, that takes a lot, of, I mean, a lot of stress, a lot of sleepless nights. Um, but yeah, that for me, resilience and persistence is probably like the most important elements. Awesome. Now on to our rapid fire questions. So those are quick questions that are to be answered in a, you know, a word or three here. Um, describe your company's innovation journey with three words. Oof. Um, define my company's innovation journey in three words. Yeah. Uh, start, fail, continue. Awesome. What questions do you ask yourself when you feel stuck or when the fucking uh, <laughs> happens? <laughs> <laughs> Why me? No, no, no. That's not true. Uh, so no, no. To be honest, when the fucking thing happens, the question I'm asking is, okay, this one is fine. What's the next one? <laughs> cool. Favorite startup and why? Um, but so this is this is quite interesting. But I, I really, 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 really like um, actually the guys that that were in our batch. Um, I, I mean, I, I just like what, what they're doing. I don't know if they, I don't think they still exist. I'm not quite sure, but Transfer Hero, just for the kind of like people that they are, the way that they, they, they run, the, the way that they behave. I mean, I, I much more prefer people that are, that are nice uh, and that, that are open uh, than anything else. So here we go. Jirai, shout out to you, right? Like, you're awesome. Your secret to work-life balance, if there is one. Don't have a life. That's the <laughs> secret. It makes it much easier. <laughs> You've got nothing to balance if you don't have one. Cool. No, no, no. So, uh, but that's a good question, right? Because now in the pandemic, you're like, I mean, 
the, you're basically stuck to your computer, right? So um, I think for me, it's really like using the calendar and like being religious about it. Because if not, yeah, you're right. And there's, if not, there's no life, right? <laughs> so Nice. And uh, what is a book you keep rereading and slash going back to? The Phoenix Project. What is it about? Oh, oh wow. Oh, right. What is ooh. this? Oh, ooh, new book, right? So, <laughs> uh, the, 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 the Phoenix Project, uh, it's actually a remake from the book The Goal. Uh, and it talks about how to organize DevOps. But to be honest, it doesn't really talk only about DevOps. It talks about how to organize um, your, your organization in such a way to have like optimal output. Um, Now, uh, the way that I now explain it sounds really boring. <laughs> uh, I'm, 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 uh, really, I would recommend it. It's a book that I got recommended by, by our advisor, uh, Eric Bowman. He's the guy that built The Sims. Um, okay. And so, yeah. So, th I mean, like, that's, that's now my holy book, right? So, nice. like, <laughs> how do you define success? Uh, uh, yeah, so that's that's a question that we ask actually to every single one of our customers when we start, uh, because we need to use that question to set up. And for me, really, how I define success is the combination of the answers I get from those customers. Because in the end of the day, you're building something that needs to add value. And if it doesn't add value to their success criteria, then I mean, what are we doing, right? We're wasting time. So that answer changes over time but it's basically i mean if you would summarize it, addressing the specific needs at that specific time of that specific group customer team whatever it is do you have a cta for this call uh so do you have oh, do you have a cta a call to action for this podcast for this blog what do you want from other people what are you looking for a traveler more clients uh, investors what what is your request at the moment Uh, so in, investors, that's that's a different topic. So we're going to leave that for now. Um, but Ooh. what would be interesting? <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> what would be what would be interesting? I mean, we we are really here to like talk to as many logistics organizations as we can. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why is because we have a proven case. We know how we can deliver the value. We know how we can help some of the challenges of those organizations. So if you are in operations or innovation in a logistic organization, uh, I'm pretty sure that Gio is going to share as well an email address somewhere in here. Um, but feel free to reach out, all right? And let's have a just a, an initial coffee, or as they say in Denmark, a fika. Um, but well, like, and, and how uh, can people find you? Is it traveler dot? Uh, traveler.co. Traveler.co. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jasper. Uh, this was What's Next. Uh, if you like this podcast, don't forget to subscribe it anywhere you get your podcast. We also have it available in blog form. So don't forget to share it with your friends, family, and colleagues. Thank you so much, Jasper. This was What's Next.